Hi everyone and welcome to part two in this video series of making Susan from Narnia. I've also posted the progress of making this dress for close friends on Instagram, so if you'd like to get exclusive access to that, plus past or future projects, then please head over to my Patreon. The link will be in the description below. Without further ado, let's get on with the video. It's a new day now and I've decided not to do eyelets at the back of the bodice because if you look here you can see that there's a gold trim that comes all the way up at the top and if I need it to close up the top there I can't like drill holes for eyelets up here because there will just be too much fabric to go through so instead I'm going to do little loops down the back of the dress and this is what I have worked out will actually work. Um, so essentially, I'm just cutting a strip of fabric. Um, for this particular one, I will trim off this, um, this edge with all that stitching on. And then you'd be left with something along the lines of this, very thin rectangle. And I will just be folding in the raw edges and then folding it once more on itself. And I will be sewing that down and that will form essentially just a long strip of no raw edges of fabric and then I can create little loops um, for the back of the bodice. So I'm going to sew, pin and sew this now. So it's all sewn down and this is basically what I'm left with and this will be sewn to the back of the bodice like so in those in like a zigzag motion to form these little loops to act as the eyelets for the lacing. All right, so now we can move on to the back of the bodice. This is one half. I've also cut out these two little strips just to use as binding almost. Let me just cut off these little ends since I don't need extra bulk. Okay, so if I grab one of these long string things that I just made, um, the idea is that this here will act as binding along this edge and will finish off those raw edges. My original idea was inwards, so I'm gonna go inwards. <laughs> um, so I need to sandwich this strip of fabric in between this and the main bodice. So we're just going to start from top to bottom and because I had to sew along here, I'm going to use this top folded edge as the part that's always going to be facing upwards. And that's just personal preference. And let's start maybe an inch below or like one thumb below the very top. I think that should be okay. And I'll just start clipping this in place. And I'm just gonna make it go out to the line of where the boning channel is just as a guide, a rough guide. And hopefully this actually works. <laughs> I don't usually do this method. I usually do eyelets, but the reason why I'm not doing eyelets for this is I think it's just going to be way too bulky with the amount of fabric that I've got because this is this is a doona cover it's quite heavy weight and I already struggle enough as is when doing eyelets um, just puncturing like even two layers of fabric so I don't want to put myself through that and I wanted this to be a relatively fun project and eyelets to me are just not fun I hope I've made enough of this loopy string so that was actually the perfect amount. That's how much is left over. Um, so now that that's down, I am going to first sew this down before sewing this on top, simply because I, I don't wanna risk this all shifting out of place. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now all of that has been sewn down. And if you, you can sort of get the idea of how that's going to look in the end. 
So I've got my strip of fabric, which I'll be using as the binding, and I will be placing this on top, right sides together. And when sewing this, I will be sewing it a little bit away from the line that I just sewed underneath, um, so that when it's turned right side this way, um, it doesn't show any of the stitching that I did just to hold these ones in place. So that's all been sewn and when I bring it right side out, that's what it's looking like. This is really, this is really bulky, so I will need to trim that off. All right, so that's really taken out a lot of the bulk. So like a lot of those parts where the loopy thing was overlapping and causing it to be very thick. And then finally to finish this off, all I'm going to do is bring this to the inside and basically just do a top stitch along here and making sure not to go onto the boning channel because I haven't inserted the boning yet. So just here in this gap here and that will help hold the um, binding down on the inside along the bodice. And there we have it. There's the finished outside edge of the bodice. I'm hoping that these will hold up. They're quite strong, like I've done three rows of stitching along here to hold these in place. So, and these are like four layers of fabric in there. So hopefully that will last the test of time. And yeah, I've just got to do this to the other side now. So the back is now pretty much done. Um, I've left that as is. I'll figure out the closure for that later. And on the inside here, I just did, zigzag stitched all of these raw edges. And after I've put in the back boning, I can just hand sew that down so it stops flapping about. And also it keeps all of this hidden. <laughs> so that's the back. I think it's time to move on to the front and figure out the gold trim section so over here what to do with this so i've just cleaned up the shape a little bit more i've trimmed the raw edges and the you know the unevenness down the center front and i've also cut just slightly into this v shape um, to replicate hers a bit more um, you can see that hers has a little v in the top so i have tried to do somewhat the same thing so I think now it's time to just work on thinking on how I'm going to use the gold fabric and also the trims over there to decorate the front and also bind off the raw edges and also close it off in the front so it's super strong. Okay, it's time to cut out the gold fabric. You can see there I've already cut like a bit of the strip and that's actually from one of my other projects and this is the leftover fabric. And I actually just had a look and that seems to be the correct sort of size that I'm looking for. Um, so if I just quickly measure that, that's approximately mm, three and a bit inches wide. And um, yeah, I'm just going to cut quite a long few strips of, that, of this because um, this length of the fabric is not actually long enough for my height. So I'm going to have to piece together a lot of these strips of fabric. I actually realized that just over three inches is probably a bit wide for the strip down the front. So what I've done is I've sewn two strips together and then I've cut it down the middle um, along down lengthwise. So I have two smaller strips and they are extra long. And this is what I'll be using for the center front of the dress. This is the center front and I also added just one boning channel on each side and zigzag stitched the edges shut just because they were annoying me and fraying so much. Um, now I can add the gold trim. This is the, um, the gold trim that I just made to be half the width and they are extra long as you can see. So I'm trying to figure out this 
it's attached in the middle here, but then they become detached at the top at the V. So I'm just trying to work through that. Um, so let me try do some pinning and then we will see where I've gotten to. Okay, so I've pinned all the way down the front of the bodice and I've pinned the gold trim. I've pinned it so that the good side, the right side of the gold trim is actually attached facing towards the lining of the bodice. So that means when it's turned right side out, like that, if you can sort of get what I'm trying to say, the gold will be against the fashion layer um, or the outside layer of the bodice and it will look really nice. It also means that these raw edges all the way down the skirt as well will be nicely finished off, hidden and away from sight. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that over to the sewing machine and sew that all down from the top right down to the bottom. I've now sewn the gold trim to the front of the bodice and I've also ironed the seam allowance as best I can over to face onto the fashion fabric because in the end that's where it's going to be. So I've done my best to do that and now I need to attach the two halves together. Um, so again looking at the reference image it's attached at the bust down to about the waist. So to do that I am going to start at the skirt, like where the skirt meets the bodice, that seam, and match those seams together here and try and to match the gold trim as well where that meets. And then pin that in place. Now this part's a bit finicky, so take your time because the idea is to get it so perfectly matched up that it looks like the gold parts have been sewn together from the outside. So like when we sew it together, it will look like this is completely flush and it looks like it's been neatly sewn and there's no blue parts of the fabric in there. So I'm just going to pin all the way up and just a bit below the waist as well. So I've gone ahead and I've sewn the two like dress parts together. So it's now attached all along here and down to about there. So about a hand's distance away from where the skirt attaches to the bodice. So all of that is attached and from the inside, whoop, it looks like this. So I've sewn it through all of these layers. So that means it's nice and strong when the lacing is put in and it's pulled quite taut. And I've also gone ahead and just tried out how the trim looks on here and then also um, top stitched down the edge of the gold trim to get rid of those raw edges. So I'm very happy with how that is looking. I will do the other side now and I'll step you through the process of how I actually did that. It was quite simple. Um, I guess the hardest part was making sure that this trim is somewhat close to the center um, because I don't want too much of a gap in the middle there with these two trims. But I do like that the trim continues down and it just, I think it really works and I'm very pleased that I managed to figure this weird intersection part. <laughs> So yeah, that's the update. So the first thing I did was sew this trim to the gold fabric. And how I do this is I press, I've already pressed the seam allowance towards the main body of the dress. And what I do now is I place this trim so that it's flush against this edge here. And then literally just you know, keeping this seam allowance towards the dress, just sew a straight stitch all the way down the middle to secure this trim to the gold.
So I've just finished sewing all of the trim onto the gold and now what I can do is turn it right side out like so and then with the edge, the raw edge of the gold fabric, I'm going to turn that raw edge under and then top stitch along here all the way down. I finished sewing the trim and look how beautiful it looks. I'm so happy with how this turned out. I did an additional row of stitching just on the very outer edge of the skirt part to keep that nice and flat. But other than that, I didn't do anything else. That was, that was it and this is how it's looking. So the last thing that I wanna do today is finish off this top edge. Um, this has also got that same gold fabric. Um, as you can see in this picture, it looks like it's got two like rows of this, so it's that double width. Um, so for that reason, I'm going to use the original three and a bit inch width that I originally cut. And I was thinking of using this braid for across the top, simply because I want to use the rest of this for her armbands. Um, if I get out my white fabric that I'm going to be using to make the shirt, um, I think this laid with this will look quite nice. Just the two of those together for the armbands. Um, but the thing is, I don't have enough of this to run it all across the top as well. So that's why I'm going to switch over to using this, this like cool looking braid. Um, so that is the plan for the top. I'm not sure, like, I was thinking maybe keeping it plain and just putting like a pleat in the fabric for up here, which also looks really nice, but I'm just like, I wanna use this trim. So we'll see what I end up doing, but I'm thinking, yeah, that doesn't look very good. Yeah, I think in the middle, because then it will imitate the look of two different pieces of fabric similar to this where there's one and two and they've got like something in the middle to divide them up. Before I can actually bind off the top edge, I do need to insert the boning. So I've already pre-cut all of my cable ties to the length that I need. Unfortunately, my cable ties aren't long enough for this particular bodice, but that's okay. I think these will do fine. So I've cut all the other ones there, as you can see, and I'll just insert those into the top. Um, and yeah, then we can move on to binding the top edge. So the boning is all in there now, so you can see there's a bit of structure and we can move on to the bias binding. I'm calling it bias binding, but it's not, it's just binding. <laughs> and how this is going to be applied is very much the same as the one from before, where we move it over this way, where we put the right side of this gold fabric to the wrong side of the blue fabric, all along the top edge. And then that will, when we sew that down, that will close off the boning channels so the boning cannot be taken out. Hence why we need to put the boning in before we did this step. So now that the gold is attached to the top of the bodice. I've also trimmed the seam allowance down. All I'm going to do next is fold this over so it's along the edge like so and I'm going to top stitch all of this down and I think first before that I do that though actually I'm going to attach the trim. That's just going to go literally in the center maybe just a little bit off off center to the right because um, this raw edge on the left hand side is going to be tucked under um, later on. So I'm just going to sew this trim down 
on both sides. Okay, almost there. Last thing is to turn this raw edge under like that and then top stitch it down. Make sure not to stitch over these boning channels because you will break a needle and it won't be very fun. Here I've already pinned this side. I just need to pin this side and then sew it. And then I am calling it quits for today because oh my gosh, this was so much work. <laughs>